Hello video viewers, you're going to watch me recording an episode of my audio podcast for learners of English. If you'd like to download the audio for this, then just click the link in the description down there. You can download the audio and then listen to it whenever you want to. Um, Luke's English Podcast is available on iTunes and it's also available on all the other podcasting software out there. So uh, subscribe and listen regularly. It will be good for your English. Okay, now let's record an episode of the audio podcast. You will be able to watch the entire thing on video if you want to, or you can listen to it when you're out and about um, traveling or doing the housework or something like that. Okay, let's get started. And here we go. Uh, let me just get this ready and then we'll be ready to begin. Okay, I'm pressing record now. You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Luke's English Podcast. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a nice day or night or evening or morning, whatever time of day it is and whoever you are and whatever it is that you're doing, here's another episode of the podcast for your listening your listening pleasure. I became Sean Connery there for a second. Here's another episode of the podcast uh, for your listening pleasure. Uh, this one is going to feature a conversation with my friend Paul Taylor. So it's a kind of an interview with Paul. Um, so that's what you can expect. Uh, there is a video for this one. So if you'd like to watch this, you can, and you'll find the video for this one on the page for this episode. You will also find the video on YouTube as well. So you've got the option. You can just listen to this in the normal way, or if you want to actually see it all happening too, you can check it out uh, and just find the video on the page for this episode. All right. Now then, as I said, in this one, you're going to listen to a conversation with, uh, with Paul Taylor in this one. But before that, I would like to make an announcement um, I've got some good news and I also need your help with something. Okay, so I know what you're thinking now. You're thinking, what's going on, Luke? What's the good news? You're obviously desperate to find out what this is all about. Um, well, the news is that uh, Luke's English Podcast has been nominated for an award. Um, it's been nominated for another award, um, which is great. And uh, it's been nominated for the um, in the British Podcast Awards in the category of the Listener's Choice Award, okay? The British Podcast Awards, uh, the Listener's Choice Award. Um, and um, so the British Podcast Awards is basically like a, uh, a, uh, a a big award system, a big award, um, a big set of awards organized uh, in order to promote podcasting in the UK. And uh, it's been set up by several people who work in media and podcasting uh, people who are very passionate about podcasting and who want to try and sort of bring more attention to podcasting uh, as a medium and generally to give those people who work in podcasting, who produce podcasts and who love podcasts, uh, to give those people a, a, a reason to celebrate and get together and generally to kind of um, just promote the medium of podcasting. Uh, so in the British Podcasting Awards, there are a few different categories, uh, a number of different categories. One of those categories is called the Listener's Choice Award. And as far as I know, pretty much any podcast can enter that one. Um, and um, as long as there's a kind of British theme, it has to be made in the UK. Um, now, I contacted the British Podcast Awards after I found I was, notif uh, I was uh, nominated. I discovered that I was nominated. Uh, uh, one of the listeners wrote something on uh, my website in the comment. It was um, it was Kat, who is a regular commenter. She told me in the comment section that uh, the podcast had been nominated, which is fantastic. And I, I thought, but I live in France. I mean, a lot of my content is recorded in, in the UK. You know, I regularly go back and I do record episodes with my family and stuff in the UK. And... Um, Obviously, this is Luke's English podcast. It's all about British English, even though I do actually live most of the time in France. So I, anyway, I contacted the British Podcast Awards and I was like, do I qualify for this? Uh, because I actually live in France, but I do do a lot of stuff in the UK as well. And I got a response saying, yeah, you're, you're all right. You qualify. We'll let you in. So I'm in. Okay, so that's it. I'm, I'm in. I'm nominated. I don't know who nominated me. 
Uh, I've no idea. So if you are the one who somehow put my name forward for the Listener's Choice Award, then thank you very much. Um, and um, the thing is, right, the thing is about this, um, these awards is that it's not just for, for learning English podcasts. It's not just for podcasts for learners of English. It's like all podcasts in any category at all. And in fact, my competitors in the Listener's Choice Award include some of the most popular podcasts in the UK. These are some of those podcasts that are on the BBC, uh, that have really, really big audiences. In fact, many of these are podcasts that I've recommended to you in the past, in other episodes of this podcast. So many podcasts. It's like inception for podcasts, isn't it, this? Podcasts within podcasts. Um Anyway, uh, I'm up against some some really tough competition, including some of my favourite podcasts that I've recommended to you in the past, including things like Mark Kermode and Simon Mayo's Film Review, The Illusionist podcast by Helen Zaltzman, and others that um, are really popular and brilliant. So if I'm going to stand a chance of winning this, right, I'm going to need your help, okay? I need you to vote for me. And when I say you, I mean you specifically. You, 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 the one who's actually listening to this right now. I need your help specifically because some of these other podcasts have a really big audience in the UK. Now, I've got a fairly big audience around the world, um, but um, I need you to be active. And if I, as I said, if I'm going to stand a chance to win this, I need every single one of you to vote for me. Okay? So, um, so please do it. Now, I know what you're thinking now. You're thinking, okay, Luke, I'm ready. How do I vote for you? Uh, well, you simply do this. Um, you need to go to uh, britishpodcastawards.com slash vote. Okay, britishpodcastawards.com slash vote. That's pretty simple. British, you know how to spell that, right? B-R-I-T-I-S-H. Podcast, P, that's P for police, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, okay, awards, A-W-A-R-D-S, dot com, forward slash, forward slash, vote, V-O-T-E. Um, or you can just click the um, British Podcast Awards image that you'll see on my website in the top right-hand corner under the low, under, under my photograph and then the email subscription form Underneath that, there's a British Podcast Awards picture. You can click that, and uh, then it'll take you to the right place. And what you do then is you just go down, just scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a, a search bar, and just type Luke's English Podcast, L-U-K-E. To be honest, if you just type L-U-K-E for Luke, it'll come up. And then you just vote for Luke's English Podcast, okay? So you find the page, uh, and then search for Luke's English Podcast and then vote. It's actually really simple. It's a lot easier than it sounds. I'm making it sound even more complicated. Just go to the page, search for the podcast, vote for it, and Bob's your uncle, all right? You will need to put an email address in, but that's just because they want to try to prevent multiple votes from the same person, okay? So they won't accept more than one vote per person. That's why they, they ask you to put your email address in there. They're not going to spam you or anything. It's They're definitely not going to do that. Um, you can actually win uh, tickets to see the awards ceremony. The awards ceremony is going to be sort of later on this year in a, in, a, in a few weeks' time. So, you know, if you vote, you might win tickets to the event as well, which is going to happen in London in King's Cross. Um, so there you go, all right? Um, now, the voting ends... Um, when is the vote? The voting ends on the... As far as I know, it ends on the 14th of April, 2017. Midnight on the 14th of April, 2017. That's when voting closes. So you've got time, but not that much time. So I suggest that if you're there, if you've got a computer th in front of you right now, if you've got your phone, you've got the internet on your phone, just do it now, right? And then you can just tell me, I've done it, Luke. I've voted for you. Good luck. All right? Okay. Um, because now you might think, well, why should I vote for you? What? <laughs> Hopefully you're not thinking that. Hopefully you understand that if I won this, it would be brilliant, right? It would be brilliant for the podcast in general. And it would be just really good for me too. And it would be good for you as well in a way. So every time 
something like this happens, and I've won a few awards in the past. I won those four Macmillan Dictionary Awards, and I was nominated in the for a British Council Elton Award, right? Every time that happens, it brings new people to the podcast. It kind of brings new blood to the podcast, essentially. It's really important. It's very healthy for a podcast to get that kind of attention because it brings new listeners on board and it's it generally sort of brings more energy in, more attention. And the more people who listen to this, uh, the better, basically, because that allows me to do things like attract sponsors and uh, basically that allows me to continue doing this podcast and it allows me to do it better. I can devote more time to it. Um, and all that sort of thing. So it's basically a very healthy thing for the podcast to to win an award and to get that kind of attention, all right? Um, and that obviously will feed into the episodes and just generally make the thing better and better. Um, yeah, because, you know, if this thing doesn't stay alive, if, if I'm not getting um, the right level of support and attention, then ultimately the podcast could could die, you know, especially if I decide that I could be spending my time in more productive ways. Anyway, I'm just trying to say to you that it would be very healthy for the podcast to vote. And if this podcast won, it would also make me personally very, very happy too. And that's good, isn't it? Happy me means happy podcast, which hopefully also means happy you. And the world is a slightly better place. It's just a tiny little bit better for everybody. Um, Okay. All right, then fine. That's it. I just wanted to tell you about that. Please vote for me in the British Podcast Awards. That's it. Done. Okay, now moving on to this episode of the podcast that you're listening to right now. So in this one, I'm talking to Paul Taylor. Now, you know Paul already, of course you do. If you're a regular listener to this podcast, you you know Paul. He's one of the most uh, regular guests that I have on this podcast. Um, And a few days ago, Paul came over to the flat and we sat outside on the terrace uh, to do a podcast uh, together. Uh, I thought that I would interview Paul all about his TV show and to find out what's been going on with with all of that because that's quite exciting really to to follow Paul's story because we have followed Paul's story. He was on this podcast, you know, a couple of years ago when he was still working at Apple and sort of wondering what to do um, and uh, we he told us about his decision to quit his job at Apple and try and make it in stand-up comedy and we learnt uh, about how it was difficult for him especially at the Edinburgh Festival where he found it really challenging and we then heard him tell us about how he released that video onto YouTube about La Bise and how it became a big hit and it got millions of, you know it got a million views in the first week and he then told us about uh, how this opened lots of doors for him and his one-man stand-up comedy show was sold out for, for months in advance. And we also learnt that uh, uh, Canal Plus, the, the French television station, approached him with the offer of making a TV show, which was, which will also be uh, published on, on YouTube. Um, and uh, we now know, of course, that uh, the, the, the show that he's been making with Canal Plus is a success. It's great. And uh, it's on. he's on French television every Saturday night now. And he's also uh, on YouTube and his videos are getting lots of views. And it's brilliant. Um, I expect you know about the show. I mean, we've talked about it on the podcast before. Uh, the program is called uh, What the F- What the Fuck France? What the Fuck France? That's the name of his TV show. And essentially, in each episode, um, Paul explores a different aspect of French life or French culture and just kind of makes fun of it, basically, and just asks, what the fuck? Because it's from the point of view of an English person living in France and the culture shock experiences that he has. And, okay, he's making fun of French culture, but at the same time, he's making fun of himself. And he's also celebrating French culture, too. Um, And... uh, uh, Amber and me are also members of the writing team for for the show. So we help Paul to write some of the jokes and some of the sketches that he has in his TV show as well, which is lots of fun. There's Amber and me and Paul and Robert Hain and a couple of other people as well who are involved in the in the writing for the show. Okay, so that's kind of just what you need to know about Paul Taylor. So I thought that I would ask uh, for uh, an update basically on how all of that's going. So let's catch up with Paul and have a bit of a chat, shall we? And you're about to see uh, and hear that we talked about his writing process for the show, about how the success of the show has changed his life in some ways, about the reactions that he gets from people that he meets 
including like people who recognize him in the street because he's kind of a bit famous now, um, or people who recognize him on public transport, or just what it's like when he meets people in social situations now that he's like a little bit famous. Um, we we talk about the differences between performing comedy on video and performing in front of a live audience, which Paul is still doing like at least twice a week. Um, and um, we also ask, I, I also ask him about his plans for other projects in the future. Um, and I also asked Paul a few questions which were sent in by listeners uh, to the podcast on the website or on Facebook. Okay, so that's what you're going to get. So let's now not waste any more time. Let's go straight to the interview with Paul right now. So uh, welcome to Luke's English Podcast. Uh, in this episode, I was we, we were expecting to have both you and Amber. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Amber couldn't make it. So it's, she wasn't it's, able to make it. It's the Paul Taylor special it's show. The, it's the yeah, it's the it's the PT comedy special. That's right. And uh, <laughs> last time, actually, I had I was I was hoping to get both of you and I just got Amber. Yeah. We talked about restaurants and stuff. Oh, nice. And then this time, no Amber, so it's just you. So it's just me. Yeah. So I'm, by myself. I'm going to ask you lots be. of probing questions about um, about what you're doing these days, right? Yeah. So that sounds good. Well, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be in, in, in place of my podcast, which I stopped doing. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be that, basically. Mm, that's sounds right. Sounds like it, but y- you're going to ask me more interesting questions than I would have asked myself, so... Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I also asked the listeners uh, on Facebook and on my website, with not a lot of time, you know, at the last minute, I asked people to send in a few questions, but they think that it's the Amber's here too, but oh, so okay. I, can, I can still ask you some of the questions oh, that okay. they asked. Yeah, that's, that sounds good. Yeah, so... I, participation. That's right. I wonder as well if some people watching this um, are like your YouTube fans who fa- watching this? I say watching this, obviously, because it's a YouTube video. I've already yeah, said that's that. Yeah, intru- I don't know if it would be found in the uh, maybe. If I put your name on it and yeah. call it like what the f- what the fuck France Paul Taylor Luke's and then English podcast Luke's English podcast <laughs> at the end, uh, people might discover. Yeah, maybe. It. But what on earth, do that? What, I wonder what your audience are thinking of this at this moment. They're probably what's going. Who's this other guy? Yeah. Who is this Luke? Well, uh, for those of you watching us who are fans of What the Fuck France, Luke is one of the writers. So he helps write the uh, the sketches with me and Amber and uh, Robert Hain, who you've also heard on the podcast, and uh, and some French people as well. So uh, he's part of the reason why you're watching it. If you're watching from the thing, so welcome. All right. Okay. Good. That's that done. And um, <laughs> so. Right. Now, what right. I wanted to say to you, right, is that obviously you've been on this podcast lots of times. Yes. And uh, I guess you first start, You first got on the podcast a few years ago, but then you came on it more regularly, yep. uh, probably about two years ago, coming up to two yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, there was a period of time where it felt like almost every other week I was on it for a while. Yeah. Uh, it might have been during the summer. I can't remember. I don't know. It, it, was, it would have been about two years ago. Two or three years ago, we were sitting on this terrace, right? Yeah. The, you, the two of us, yeah. and we were talking about your experiences uh, at the Edinburgh. Film oh Festival. yeah, yeah. So that would have been uh, in August, yeah, two thousand two years ago, yeah. Okay. So a, a year and a half ago. All right, but also before that, we talked about some sort of reviews that we'd both received from from uh, uh, people who'd seen one of our comedy shows. Do you yeah. remember? Anyway, Vaguely. We did spend some time sitting down here talking about sort of. Uh, the difficulties that, well, let's start with you, that you'd had um, doing comedy yeah. at the Edinburgh Festival. And now here you are <laughs> with your own TV show <laughs> and, uh, you know, people are recognising you in the street and stuff. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a yeah it's been a, a, a crazy year and a half. Um, yeah, it's uh, completely unexpected. No idea why uh, it's all it's all happened, but it's all happened in the last year and a half. And it's, uh, it's good, the, the, the wave arrived and i'm just trying to keep the wave alive you know what i mean like i'm trying to using a surf you can tell i don't really surf but um you're english uh, if <laughs> uh we have surfing in cornwall it's about 10 people in england who surf it's about 10 people in england that surf uh but yeah they, i guess when when you're surfing there's a wave that comes and you you ride the wave mm-hmm. and then eventually the wave dies and then you f- you go back out and you ride another wave right. so uh the first wave is is still is still there and right. so th- that'll be there until the end of the summer, basically. Yeah. Uh, or ah, the beginning of the summer, and then there'll be the summer, which is when the wave dies. And then between, in those two months, I have to go swim back out and find something, another wave. Okay. All right. That, that ended up being an all right analogy, actually. It worked. It <laughs> basically <laughs> worked. Okay. So the the wave that's going to end in summer, that's uh, the TV show. The, the, the What YouTube, the Fuck France YouTube uh, TV video. YouTube 
YouTube phenomenal. series. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so when you finish doing that, what's the next step? What are you going to do? I don't that? know. I, I, I don't know what's next. I have to, I, I'm waiting for this one to drop and then, uh, but in the meantime, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been on the wave. I've had a look behind me to see where the other wave is. Yeah. Uh, so I can kind of see where it is, but yeah. I'm not sure. So it might be another TV show. The stand up show I'm definitely going to be still doing. Um, so that's uh, that's my priority is always the the stage because I prefer it when people can I can talk to people in real life rather than through audio or video that I don't hear hear or see their reactions afterwards. So, so for example, the people who are watching this or listening to this, they don't count. They I don't, don't. I don't care about any of you because <laughs> you mean nothing to me. <laughs> Only if you see him live, that's where it really counts. Apparently, yeah. Do you find that it's uh, do, you, do you find it different? Do do uh, is there a difference between uh, the the stuff you do on video uh, and the stuff you're doing live on stage? Um, I mean, is it a different kind of performance? Yeah, or? definitely, hundred percent. Like it's the the thing with doing stage. As you know, what's great is you can think about an idea today mm. and then tonight we're performing. So you might be like, oh, this funny thing happened to me on like in the street today. Let me figure out how I can tell this into a funny story or make it into a funny story and tell it the same night. And if it's funny, people will laugh. If it's not funny, people won't laugh. And then that's it. Then you know straight away within, what, eight hours if, if something you've created is funny or not. The, the difficulty with the, with the What the Fuck series is that, you know, like we'll sit down... A uh, group of uh, five of us, and I'll be like, "Right, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about skiing. This right. let's find some funny stuff about skiing, right?" And we we brainstorm that, and we laugh within each other. It's like, "Okay, cool. Here are some funny ideas," and then we put it in a you know, I I put it on my document, big list. I then write the monologue of the whole show, mm -hmm. um, probably like a week or two later. Yeah, and then I send that script to the producers and the people that validate it all yeah. then it gets validated and some of the stuff gets changed some of the wording gets changed great fantastic then a couple of weeks later we have a like a production meeting to be like okay cool we're all going to wear these costumes we're going to be in this location whatever mm. then we'll go and film it spend two days filming the sketch then it gets edited it, music gets added to its subtitles then it gets put online and then after that then i can go okay it's got x amount of views maybe people laughed maybe people didn't because i can't see the people when they're laughing yeah. so it's like a whole month basically from the inception or the creation of the the episode to when it actually gets released and so it, by that time you've forgotten whether it's funny or not right okay. do you know what i mean are you reading comments on youtube i'm reading a couple of comments what i usually do every saturday at 11 30 12 is when i post when the videos get posted on on youtube mm -hmm. uh, automatically and then i post it on my social media and i spend maybe well, throughout the the first day is when i'll read the comments just to get the overall view of the first day and then and then I just stop because it's too much and I think if you get um, especially YouTube comments they can be very uh, very negative so I've I've kind of uh, stopped doing it I still do it but I shouldn't but I you know yeah. <coughs> it's easy to get sort of sucked into uh, thinking about YouTube comments too much. Yeah. You can get really demoralized when people like start saying, yeah, this is shit. It's, it was good at the beginning. Now it's terrible, blah, blah, blah. For this, I mean, there's the equal amount of people being like, oh yeah, it's good. It's, you know, it's great. Favorite episode, whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's difficult to not be affected by the negative comments. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's going very, very well. But of course, you know, every now and then you get negative comments. It's just YouTube. People on YouTube don't think that much about what they're writing. And so as a result, you shouldn't think too yeah. much about what they've it's written either, I guess. It's a good point. Uh, but some, for some reason, YouTube, uh, the comment section on YouTube has a culture of being just full of, you know, awfulness. I mean, I've read some YouTube comments threads that are just like really depressing yeah. just the level of idiocy going mm. on in there um okay so so that's that and, and has this has it changed your life at all do now that you've um you know now that you're fairly well known um has it changed my life y yes and no like it doesn't feel like anything's that different compared to last year I mean, it does, but it's not like uh, I think big picture wise. No, like there's, no, you know, it's still the still the same guy who tries to make people laugh, who you know likes the same things as before. So nothing's really changed. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's changed stuff. Like you know, people recognize me a little bit in the streets now, uh, and sometimes really? in bars and cafes or in the metro and things like that. So it can be. It's a bit more. Uh, like like I have to be careful now who I give my phone number to and my like I, the I ordered some food at home. 
from Deliveroo. Yeah. Because uh, it was lunchtime and I couldn't be bothered making any food. So I was like, oh, I'll get some food delivered. And the guy opened when I opened the door, he's like, oh, I thought it was you. I saw your name and I was like, oh, I'm not sure. It's not going to be him. And it's you. Like, I really love your videos, blah, blah, blah. Now that guy knows where I live. Like, he knows the door right. that enters into my... The only thing that's private now is... It, it, so that's a little bit worrying. Just the fact that you know, he, I mean, whatever. Because he's going to come around and be like, I don't like what you said about French food. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to hit you in the face <laughs> with a baseball bat or something. Yeah, exactly. Or come and, come and, uh, come and steal everything in my house, you know, because he might be like, oh, he's on TV. He must be rich right. and, uh, and uh, rob me. Okay. So yeah, that's it. That's, that is like little tiny, uh, changes in behavior. Okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. But yeah, it's been cool. Do you get noticed then? Do yeah, people notice you? Uh, yeah. Quite often. Yeah. It happens, uh, yeah, it, yeah, like the young, it's people at like our age. You know, it's never really anyone really old or really really young. Mm -hmm. It's sort of between I don't know twenty and thirty, twenty and forty, uh, the people that come and that come uh, and and uh, interrupt me in a restaurant or in a bar or something like that, or they'll smile at me in the street or in the metro, and um, I don't know how to react. I don't want to be the guy who's like, oh, you're smiling at me, so you know who I am. So I'm going to smile back and be like, yeah, of course it's me. You recognize me. Yeah. So I just tend to, when people look at me and smile, I just kind of like, like, yeah, okay. And I get, I get, I get more shy than I already am when people recognize me. Are you shy? Because yeah. you don't seem shy on the show. No, it's just because it's all fake, isn't it? It's all a, it's all a, it's all a. Well, it's it, the the thing that I found. Like I've I've always been a really shy person, but then people would be like, "Oh, Paul, when you worked at Apple, you stood in front of people and gave training sessions, and then in your spare time, you would stand up on stage and try and make people laugh. So how could you possibly be shy?" And I've I found that it was um, it was a type of shyness where it's when it's the expected result for me to stand and speak in front of people, then I'm fine. Yeah. But it's when it's not that. It's not like no one's waiting for me in the metro to be like, hey, everyone, my name's Paul Taylor, blah, blah, blah. You know, so I, I get really shy in real situations. In fake situations, I'm fine. Like if there's a camera put in front of me, uh, like a big film crew with a big boom mic and like yeah. 20 people, I'll put on a show because I know that that's what's the expected result. Or if I'm going on stage uh, at a comedy show, same thing. But if it's a house party, I suddenly become this really introverted person because at a house party, you're not necessarily expected to be the one that's yeah. doing the show right yeah because the rules are different I, I i sort of i know how you feel because um you know when i'm doing stand-up too people sometimes say you know you've got to be confident to do that and sort of not necessarily because I, I feel quite shy as well in, yeah. in social situations but doing a stand-up show is kind of easier in a way because you've got everyone sits down and they look at you and no one's going to interrupt you yeah and like when i'm with people i'm you know, I don't want to be the one who's doing all the talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather just sort of like let other people talk and listen to them. Totally, yeah. But the nice thing about doing stand-up is that you've got a microphone and it it's expected f for you to be doing the talking. Exactly, you know, It's yeah. kind of easier yeah. in a way. The, the rules are far <laughs> clearer. Whereas in, in, in conversations, real, yeah. you've got to do turn-taking and you've got to pretend you're interested you in what the oh God. <laughs> well, and, and now it's even worse because now... Now that I, when I go to house parties now, I've been to a couple of house parties <laughs> recently where the, all everyone in the house knows me, but I'm still as shy as I would as I always have been. So normally, before all of this, I'd go to a house party and I'd maybe say hello to like the first three or four people mm. in the house, and then just kind of stick to them like glue because I don't want to have to be social. I'm really shy. Now when I do that, I still do the same thing. Like I walk in and say, and now like I get, I'm worried that the people who I'm not really saying hello to are like, oh, now that he's it's become arrogant. this famous guy, he's, uh, he's uh, an annoying, you know, famous person who who doesn't care about real people anymore, yeah. so, which is completely not the case. It's just that I'm too, I'm too shy to... to You're also just being normal because like, I mean, maybe there's an expectation in people's minds that because they know you from the TV show where mm. you're like, hi, I'm Paul. <laughs> and, you know, uh, and, you know, all that <laughs> stuff that you do, uh, um, you know, that they expect you to be like that at the party <laughs> as well. Where yeah. you're like, hi, I'm Paul. I'm from England, but uh, <laughs> I live in France. It would be funny if I walked into every house party and she'd be like, hi, my name's Paul Taylor. I'm English, but I live here in France. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to get a beer for three reasons. <laughs> <laughs> me and Addy were joking last night about our wedding, being like, "Yeah, when uh, when uh, when Adam, uh, who's who's doing the the, the ceremony, is like, uh, do you, Paul Taylor, take Adeline Claire George Hoog to be your lawfully wedded wife?" I can be like, "Oh, I'm glad you fucking asked. <laughs> I'm going to say yes for three <laughs> reasons." Because <laughs> you're getting married, Paul. We are. I getting am getting. Married. We are getting married. We are. We, both of us. No. Uh, I, yeah, I'm getting married in June. 
Sorry, ladies. And men. Yeah. I do get quite a lot of attention from the gay community as do well. Do you really? Yeah. yeah what's, uh, what's tweets. That? Just men on Twitter and Facebook just being like, oh, you're really cute. I really like you. Do you want to get married? And I'm like, oh, I'm already getting married to a, to a girl, unfortunately. They're like, ah, oh, never mind. It can always, you know. Why is that? Is because you're kind of uh, nicely dressed and you're kind of oh, cute? I've got no idea. I've got no idea why. Uh, I think it's because... Uh, no, I've got no idea. Yeah, I was just going to say maybe it's because I'm not, you know, the, I'm not the typical like lad, like Oi, football, football, slag, football, <laughs> you know. That's the typical lad. Yeah, Oi, football, football. Yeah, gives a pint of beer, go down the pub, shag a bird. Have you, you know ever, what I mean? Have you ever actually heard someone saying? Oi, football, football. Have you ever heard I anyone mean, say that? No, but <laughs> basically, you get the you get the proper lads, you know, down at down in fucking London. Oi, you should get for a pint, lads. You got that pint. Fuck the birds. Leave her at home on a Sunday yeah. and a Sunday. Like, fucking go down the pub. I can have a pint and you know, talk about sex. Do you know what, what I mean? Oh, Paul, where's it going? You what, mate? Yeah, mate, it's going fucking wicked. I banged this bird last night. Oh yeah, she was fucking top son. The only problem was here yeah, is that like when she got naked, yeah, I thought, oh. Shit, it's too late now, isn't it? Fucking yeah. Let's get, you you know, got some Jaeger bombs? Let me go get some Jaeger bombs. You know what mate. else, Paul? Football, 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 yeah, football, mate. Hey. football. Right. Down a bird. So yeah. So I'm, I'm because I'm not that type of person. I think uh, people, I mean, girls as well. They're like, oh, okay, he's like a normal guy who, who, who might be nice, you know, yeah. rather than be the typical, you know. Well, in France, I get, I, I get it more like comments that. French men are all a bunch of assholes, like misogynistic, and they just want to have sex with everyone. Um, and the, uh, it's refreshing that I'm just like, "Hey, cool, how are you?" Like, I'll just I'm chatting yeah. to you, nice looking girl, just because I want to chat rather than being like, "Oh, should we go down to my place?" So French men can be a little bit more macho and a bit more alpha male, yeah, kind of thing. Whereas you're not; you're just sort of a bit more. Edged, uh, yeah, I guess, and and so I, people find it charming, I guess, which is which is cool, which is very nice, men and women, which is I'd rather have. The, uh, uh, the female and the gay men on my side than the straight men because there's more females and gay men combined yeah. than just straight men. Right. So, yeah. Exactly. Why it's, not? It's like, what? I don't know what the percentage is, but yeah, you certainly have... Well, it's it, usually it's 50-50 men and women, right? Yeah. But then if you say 10% of the men are gay, All right. I'm throwing out a number there, yeah, maybe it is 10, yeah. uh, then that's 60% of people that I have on my but side. But what about gay women? Are they interested in you? Ah, that's a good point. That might equal out. Yeah. It might balance out again in the wrong direction. Because maybe for well, yeah, maybe for gay women, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not football-y enough. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I don't know. What what do gay women like about men? Anything? I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe we shouldn't even be talking about this. Yeah, I don't know. On Luke's English podcast. Well, I mean, I've I, I've got a, a couple of uh, I've got a couple of gay women friends. Yeah. And uh, I mean, they there's nothing different really no. about them than. Yeah, there's nothing. It doesn't. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. They're, they're not different to, to other women in terms of their behaviours and stuff like that that I noticed anyway. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but I mean, if you know, if I'm getting messages from uh, from both people being like, "Oh, you're cute. Do you want to get married? Oh, I like you. Should we go for a drink?" I'm like, "Yeah, no, but thanks for the offer." They're really proposing marriage to you on on what Twitter, Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple of marriage, like oh, marriage. Do you wanna, yeah. Some some guy was like. Uh, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he's like, oh, you know, do you want to get married and stuff like that? I'm like, oh, thanks for the offer. I'm already getting married. Uh, and, uh, you know, I dropped the hit. I, like, I was like, I'm getting married uh, to, to my girlfriend that I've been with for eight years or whatever. He's like, oh, you know, never mind. You know, good. Keep doing what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Blah, blah, blah. Just make it absolutely certain. Not only am I getting married, <laughs> I'm getting married to a girl and I've been with her for eight reasons. So I'm not going to marry you <laughs> for three reasons. <laughs> yeah, well, and on top of it, it I like the the episode that's coming out on YouTube uh, this Saturday um, is on the firemen in France. Oh yeah, and it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, If I didn't it, like, if if gay men weren't interested in me, now they will. Like, I'm. I, it's a bit of a homoerotic thing where I'm. I. I. You know, you were there when we wrote the episode. And we were talking about how sexy they are and how hot they are. To be honest, right. Amber was also there when we wrote that it episode. It was mainly, it was a lot of Amber. It was mainly Amber <laughs> spent a lot of time talking in great detail about how attractive she finds firemen. Mm. And so a lot of that material has found its way into Paul's episode about firemen yeah. in France. And so as a result, the episode is quite sort of homoerotic, you could say. But, you know, also I'm sure that gay men, uh, you know, like the firemen too oh, so sure you're appealing do, yeah. to that 60% that yeah, you yeah. talked about before <laughs> okay um, 
Okay, what's your favourite episode of your show? Oh, God, that's a good question. Mm, favourite episode? Ooh, it's uh, like trying to choose a favourite child, isn't it? Are they all yeah. your favourites? Uh, favourite episode. Okay, in terms of in terms of the, the experience of filming, it was definitely the skiing last week. That was a lot of fun. We went up to the mountains and filmed two episodes, one on skiing, one on pharmacies. So that was, uh, that was by far the... the Wait a minute. You went up a mountain and you recorded an episode about skiing, yeah. okay, and an episode about pharmacies. Yeah. Why are, all, are there lots of pharmacies up? No, the it's just that we had to combine two episodes. We couldn't go to the budget-wise. They wouldn't send us to the mountain just to film one episode. We needed to make the most out of it. So we we uh, we had to fit it. And the only one that I could really think of that would that would match uh, was pharmacies because. Because in France, they have pharmacies everywhere. They have pharmacies everywhere. So it was, yeah, I mean, we've, we've got a political one coming up. We've got a, a French humor. Uh, and we wanted, like, guests for those episodes. And they are all in Paris. So, so yeah, mm -hmm. we ended up doing pharmacy. So that was definitely the funnest experience, shooting. The, the, okay. My favorite one that's... Um, uh, oh, it's a good one. That's a good question. I don't know. I'll come back to you on that. I like the one about French language. Yeah, French language is the is the is the one that's got the most views because it's French language. It's too easy. Like it's one of those ones. Like if we did a uh, an episode on French expressions, that would take off. It would be the it would be it would be viral. It would it would work because you should. Yeah, it's already been done now. I don't. I like I. It, we might do. We might do. But I. I. It. Uh, like Swan Perry say did a a, a version on that. Um, uh, there was a, an advert for TransferWise, a, a, a money transferring app, which is very cool. Um, they did an advert on French expressions. Like, I feel like it's one of those, it's like the too easy, you know, Seb Marks did a whole thing, a whole series about the French language. So it's it's it's, it's easy and it's, it's kind of like clickbait, you know, it's like one of those things where I know if we do it, we'll do it well and it will get, it will probably be one of the best videos that we do, but... I, f I feel like it's too easy. Like I want to be, I want it to be more challenging. So yeah. um, it's already been done. Yeah, French language is cool. Uh, what one? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of of, of one that I that I like more than the others. Um, well, you don't have to choose a favorite. Maybe your favorite hasn't been done yet. Maybe um, maybe it hasn't. It's, it's yet to come. So you've covered like a diverse number of topics. Yeah. We've you, you've done like food and uh, music and uh, you know what's what are all the other ones like uh, uh, coffee and coffee wine. Coffee was good. I liked coffee. That was fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. coffee wine. Uh, French the dubbing uh, in France. Dubbing. I really like the one about dubbing because that is true, isn't it? That um, you know, and I'm sure it's true in many other countries as well that movies and TV shows that were. Filmed filmed in English when they're put on TV in France they uh, they have like s another actor a French actor mm. doing the dubbing over the top and it <laughs> yeah. kind of I understand obviously why they do it because it helps the audience to understand but it's got two impacts one is that it somehow changes the atmosphere of the film the film's not so yeah. good anymore and secondly it kind of prevents the audience from really improving their English. Yeah. So, you know, you find the countries where they have really good English also show, they also broadcast the programs the original in English the original films, version. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, that, that might have been my favourite one. I mean, it was the first one as well. But mm. it was just, it, yeah, it was just an exciting, it, like we've got into a routine now. So the, the, the whole process is less exciting and less, um, what's the word? I guess, uh, not dreamlike, but it's less of a, it's less of a like, so you, you You've gone through the honeymoon period. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, the f I'd, I'd say the. Well, we we originally had ten. That was it. We 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 got uh, commanded, commanded, Commission, commissioned, commissioned uh, ten episodes. That was the first. Uh, the first lot was ten episodes. Let's go. So I chose themes that I was like, okay, here are the top ten themes for me that I think would be funny and I think would work and that I already have jokes about. Uh, and then we got extended to fifteen, and then we got extended to thirty six. So um, I think. To be honest, after the first five, I was I was already like not liking the writing process. I was just like, I can't be bothered. I just uh, I like I really hate writing so much. Like I hate I love the when we're all together and sitting and and throwing out jokes, mm -hmm. but I hate the process of sitting down in front of my computer and actually writing it out word for word because um, yeah. it's long, it's painful. I hate it, uh, and I still hate it. The best and the best thing is actually. Uh, like performing the stuff and getting laughs. I mean, do you prefer doing the videos or prefer stand uh, much doing stand up a hundred percent? Yeah, yeah. Like I would if if I if I was given a choice to today, tomorrow, whatever. Like oh, you you can either do one or the other. It would be stand up, even though it gets about five thousand uh, times less visibility mm -hmm. uh, than you know because each video that we've done on average is probably 
around about 600,000 views. Yeah. F let's say 500,000 views to, for, for easy maths. Uh, when I do my stand-up show, I perform in front of 100 people. So in order for the same amount of people to see my whole stand-up show, I'd have to do it 5,000 times. Mm. Uh, but one video gets so... The, it's it's a, a bit of a dilemma, really, where there's... I much prefer doing stage, but I know that the videos help bring people to my show. So it's a, it's a kind of... Uh, it, it's not a, it's not a vicious circle because it's not vicious, but it's kind of like a you've got to I've got to find balance between both of them. Okay, all right. Um, um, yeah. Um, from the website, uh, Chris Benitez. Oh, Chris Benitez. Hello, Chris. He wants to know what you're going to do after this. I don't know. You did we talk about that already? I we didn't. I, I I've been uh, no. It's just vague. I I I I am proposing different things to Canal Plus, the same TV people that are that are producing what the fuck. Uh, different ideas for different TV shows uh -huh. uh, that would be a little bit longer. You know, not necessarily three minutes, but you know, there's a. Uh, I've I've uh, talked about the uh, the option of doing like a late show, uh, a late night talk show, sort of like Jimmy Fallon sort of thing but a bit different yeah. um that's something that i'd like to do i'd like to do maybe like a, um, uh, a documentary series where i go around different countries and ask and figure out their stereotypes not necessarily in the what the fuck format but like you know hey you know in spain well, we think these are the top three stereotypes that the world has about spain you know they eat late uh they have siesta and whatever you know the the, the, the i'd ask that and then i'd go to spain i'd meet people there kind of like a documentary mm. kind of like an idiot abroad if you've seen the documentary an idiot abroad uh with ricky gervais um it's similar in that style obviously i wouldn't be playing an idiot i'd just be playing myself but i'd be going around meeting people and uh i wouldn't need to play an idiot i, I am an idiot uh and so yeah that's a that's a, a an idea that i've had as well that's a great idea i love that yeah that's really good that it's it's kind of like a travelogue like yeah a travel show kind of thing where yeah. like here you could you could start every episode with a little kind of what the fuck spain or whatever yeah, yeah. and it's like here are the stereotypes and it's all quite light and the, and quite humorous yeah. you know full of humor and stuff and then you actually go and then you're meeting people and yeah like i would meet people either like the i guess the the best thing would be like meeting like personalities from those countries you know if right. i go to if i go to germany then like i don't know who's a famous german like i don't know uh comedian or film person or personality Germany, like Spain, I'd go and meet Penelope Cruz or something like that. Yeah. Something that everyone knows and I'd yeah. be like, all right, cool. Everyone thinks that in Spain, you go to sleep for two hours in the afternoon. Is it true? And then I'd go and sleep with Penelope Cruz. <laughs> 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 and like, no, I'm still not convinced, Penelope, that uh, I still, you know, just come into the bedroom and show me. Just, I really I need don't to believe be you guys go to sleep. So, yeah, yeah that, that's kind of the idea. And instead of calling it, like, calling it Stereo Trip, because it's like uh, a it's like a trip about stereotypes. Very good, and it works really well in French, better in it than French like stereotype. Because uh, the word for stereotype in French is stere stereotype, right. so stereotype, whatever. Right, that's a, that's see. an idea, okay. and then um, so yeah, I'm pitching those ideas. We're working uh, a little bit on them, mm -hmm. not too hard. Yeah, because I'm already super busy with uh with this, and then uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Maybe maybe one of those will happen. Maybe none of them will happen. Um, but definitely the stand-up show is still going to be happening. Yeah, okay, great. And so you've got the stand-up show also tonight. Tonight. What's happening tonight, Paul? Tonight I'm that hosting... That none of the people who listen to this or watch this, well, I don't know, some of them might be in be in France, but... Uh, Maybe, the, but they would have listened to this after it's happened. Exactly, so, it so you matter. can't come, but you it might come. happen again, right? It might happen again. I'm doing a, I'm hosting a show, uh, and uh, very egotistically, I've called it Paul Taylor's Comedy Night. So it's a basically a comedy night where I invite... Uh, my friends to come and perform and uh, it gives me a chance to maybe do some new jokes that I don't do in my one hour show and it gives me a chance to invite people uh, like you yeah, to, right. come and do, uh, to come and do the stage so Paul Taylor's Comedy Night and I it was basically to see if people would come to a show with my name on it which is good because then if that happens then I can you know keep doing it and we can do it more often and then yeah. more people can enjoy performing in front of more people yeah absolutely um, some more comments from um from the internet yes um laura fisher says break a leg thanks laura for the show tonight and she also says paul speaks fluent french yes ask him to pronounce this tongue twister in french it's a french tongue twister okay now i'm going to try and say the tongue twister <laughs> really slowly and you can say it kind of quickly all right <laughs> okay you also need to tell me what it means okay it's, it's you probably know it already it's un chasseur sachant chasser son son chien et un bon chasseur 
what does that mean? I don't know. I didn't get half of it, but I think it's <laughs> it's, it's something there. to do with a a good a good uh, a good um, hunter that knows how to hunt without his dog is a good hunter. Uh, 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 let, let me let me read it. Where is it? Yeah. Un chasseur sachant chasser sans son chien est un bon chasseur. Un chasseur sachant chasser sans son chien est un bon chasseur. Yeah. So a hunter that knows how to hunt without his dog is a good hunter. Okay. Right. It's true. Yeah. Right. I guess so. But can you say it really fast? All right. Un chasseur sa- non. Un chasseur sachant chasser sans son chien est un bon chasseur. Almost. Pretty good. There's too many. There's too un many chasseur sachant chasser sans son chien est, est un bon chasseur. Yeah. Un chasseur sachant chasser sans son chien est un bon chasseur. Bloody hell. It's about as close as Didn't I can take get. you long to get that one. Actually, I got a comment from someone else. I think his name is Paul on the website recently. <laughs> Does he go, hi, my name is Paul. <laughs> 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 I'm Russian, but I listen to Luke's English podcast. Very good. For three I- reasons. Uh, Paul said, hello, Luke. Great that you'll be meeting Paul and Amber. No Amber, though. Sorry. Unfortunately. Uh, ask Paul, what's the secret behind speaking with that supersonic speed? I've heard him spitting like a thousand words per minute. Let him share some tips with us. This will surely be helpful. Love, Paul. So um, what's the, what's your, what are your tips for speaking really fast? My tips for speaking really fast? I don't know. Do you speak really fast? I don't get the impression. I mean, in the videos, I guess I do, but that's because we've got a lot of text to fit into not very much time. And a lot of the outtake to me just going, and I mess up the the, the wording because it is fast. Tips for speaking fast. Um, if you want to speak fast, I guess the, the, the best thing to do is to repeat phrases mm. like that, you know, like tongue twisters or repeat yeah. phrases that... And just keep going as quickly as possible. It's very, yes, a complicated one, really. Or, may, here's a tip. Maybe they listen to your podcast at twice the speed, mm-hmm. or 1.5 times the speed, and then they try and speak over it at the same time Yeah, as you. Right. Maybe. Yes, exactly. Shadowing me, so repeating after me, doing it, doing it quickly. Practice, 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 I think, is the thing that... As you said, when you when you're doing your uh, your your videos, yeah. Um, first of all, those videos are edited a little bit so that there are like edits so that it is as quick it's as possible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very very carefully edited, and also yeah, you've written the script in advance and you've practiced yeah. it. And yeah, there are many occasions where you get it wrong, you f- you you mess it up, and you have to re-record. So the video looks like you're able to speak at a hundred miles an hour, like yeah. Scatman John. Do you remember <laughs> Scatman <laughs> no. John? No. I'm the scat man. That remember remember yeah, him? yeah, yeah, I remember that. Scat man John. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Just a <laughs> memory from the <laughs> night. <laughs> Something like that. Hmm. That's one for the I people d- yeah. in the 90s. You remember know, the 90s? Um, yeah. Um, <coughs> speaking quickly, I don't know. You've probably got better tips than I do. I think do. it's just practice, practice, practice. And, um, you know, you're able to say these things quickly because you're not making them up off the top of your head. Yeah. You're actually reading out a script that, that you've written in advance mm. and trying to deliver it as fast as possible for the video cameras. And you often make mistakes and those don't end up in the video. So it's kind of like sort of, it, it you know, it's a bit like cheating. He's cheating, basically, Paul. Yeah. Um, so if you want to do it like him, what you need to do is uh, get a YouTube series on Canal Plus yeah. <laughs> and write a bunch of sketches and then try and do them in like you know a very limited time period. The and thing that impresses me, I do know what he means though, because in, in Spain, they speak incredibly quickly. Uh, com- like yeah. f- for them, they speak at a normal speed, but for anyone who's foreign, like my Spanish is good, but it's not amazing. And sometimes when I when I'm in a conversation with a Spanish, but like two Spanish people talking to each other, it forget it. It's just I can't. There's too. It's just too. No. It, no. So no so you need, to, but you need to have it. You need to speak the language first. I would concentrate on learning the language first to the maximum amount possible, and then work yeah, out. Work it. Work out from uh, there. Uh, then keep going quicker. It's not a competition. It's not a race. It's yeah. not a Formula One race. It's Calm not, it down. Yeah, chill out, Paul. <laughs> you know, where, it's like when you. Uh, it's like that cliche of what a police officer <laughs> says when they stop you for speeding. Uh, why well, the big rush? Why the ri- why, hello, uh, hello, sir. Ah, oh, Paul Taylor from uh, what the fuck, France? Why the big rush? <laughs> Where's the fire? <laughs> That's what police officers say yeah. if they pull you over for speeding. There. We had a scene like that in the in the driving episode oh where yeah, the policeman yeah. pulled me over because I was watching my own YouTube videos. <laughs> right, <laughs> <laughs> and he started to find me. That was funny. Um, 
so, and of one more point on that, yeah. I don't think it's a good idea to uh, speak too quickly anyway. Like in most situations, it's not really good to speak too fast. No. Like I can't really think of any situation in which you should be firing off words as quickly as possible. In fact, if anything, to be more effective, you need to slow it down slow a little down, bit. Yeah. Slow it down, leave some more spaces between the words, and then you end up sounding like Barack Obama. Michael oh. Caine <laughs> or indeed Barack Obama. The thing about Obama is that he starts slow... Yeah. In every little thing he says, he starts slow and then he speeds up at the end. <laughs> so he's like, so, Paul, uh, I don't know, what, what shall I say? Read out one of the questions. Uh, uh, and I have another question for for you, Paul. Who would win in a fight between a shark and a grizzly bear? Who would win in a fight is that is that an actual? It's question? a genuine question between from someone. I can't read it because it's written in Cyrillic, and I can't read Cyrillic. Uh, who would win in a fight uh, between a shark? What do you mean it's written in Cyrillic? You know, Russian. Oh, Russian oh, the name. Script. Sorry, I see what you mean. Yeah, the name is written. Anton. In Russian. Is that Anton? It, it looks like Anton, but uh, uh, H is a. Uh, uh, oh, I can't remember now. I used to be able to read Russian. Really? Uh, what you used to be able to read quickly. <laughs> Oh, the Russian joke is back. <laughs> uh, who, anyway, anyway who, who would fight between who would win in a fight between a shark and a grizzly bear? What kind of a question is that? Well, I, to be honest, I did a, f- a whole episode of the podcast on that question. Oh, did you? A few years ago. Oh, yeah. It, why? Why not? Why I, those two animals that would never meet in real life? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because it used to be a thing. There was a book about it, and there was like a so, specifically a shark. Tony, and Tony Law, you know Tony yeah. Law. He did a, a stand-up routine about. <laughs> Fighting a grizzly bear and a shark. And really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's right. Uh, well, I would say uh, it used to be a meme. It used to be a meme. It's not right. Okay. More. Well, probably a shark because he's probably bigger. Yeah. Really. And he could just swallow the bear whole. But you see, the thing is that it has to take place on an even playing field. So basically, it takes in place the sky. In, in water in the sky. Just. <laughs> Well, you shoot both shoot. of them into the air, like <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, and right. then uh, and then they fight it out, and then they fall down because I mean. So it has to happen in water. What? It has to happen in water that is t- shallow enough for the bear to be able to operate and deep enough for the shark to be able to swim around. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's kind of like sort of like a meter leg high. high water for the bear or whatever. Yeah, but then he's going to be slowed down because he's in the water, isn't he? Yeah. The bear's legs are not very long. So the shark just comes in, just yeah, takes a bite uh, and that's it. It's game, game over. over. Yeah. I don't, I don't see right. how a bear could win that fight. There you go, Anton, or if that is your name. The shark would win. Okay, then. Um, so, oh, we've got some more questions uh, here somewhere. Um, um, a question there about Amber's uh, podcast, a question about uh, your project. We've been talking about that. Um, some others here. All right, here are some more. Finding them here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Um, stupid so, faces. Uh, right, Christina Ricciardo. Mm-hmm. Uh, would like to know um, about your first ever performance. Can you remember your first ever yes. comedy sta- gig? Sta- yeah, my stand-up gig, yeah. What happened? Um, it was in London, and it was downstairs in a pub near Westminster. Mm. And uh, I'd gone with four of my friends uh, because it was an open mic night, so I wanted to go see what an open mic night would be like. Because I that was when I started getting into comedy heavily was w- uh, my last year of university, and um, and I typed in well, how do you do stand up? And the, and the thing was you have to go to an open mic night, not Mike M I K E, but Mike as in microphone. No, it's not like a guy called Mike. Hi, I'm Mike, and uh, I'm very can, open. You can ask me anything. <laughs> I'm be, I'm willing to accept any idea. That's an open mic night, but this is an open mic mic microphone this night. This kind of mic. Like the microphone is open, and so it's uh it's when you've got uh. Uh, new acts coming and so we we d- I decided to go for a laugh to see what it would look like or what those kind of nights were like and one of the guys who got up on stage uh was he seemed like he was about 16 he arrived with his laptop uh and two speakers that were outside so imagine him trying to get on stage with a laptop here and he basically tried to stand up and he's also got two speakers two like s- two speakers that he's got and he was trying to hold them all up and he'd recorded his face. He'd recorded his actual face so that when he would speak, 
Uh, if you're watching the video of this, you can now see the laptop in front of my face. But he was basically recorded his jokes at home uh, of him on his on his own, and then he, the, his plan was to <laughs> to to just put the laptop in front of his face, and those jokes would come out. Except he he didn't have three hands, uh, so he couldn't have the laptop and the two speakers at the same time. So he and he was shaking. He was like he was really shaking because he was nervous, and so he ended up not performing. And then uh, my best mate said to me. Um, Mate, since uh, since he's not doing his five minutes, you should go ask the MC if you can do five minutes. And I was like, no, no, I've not prepared anything. Even though I had prepared something, just in case. You know, right. I I had a routine-ish in my head uh, that I'd been talking about with friends and stuff. He's like, no, no, you should go ask him. You should go ask him. So I went and asked him, and the guy said, yeah, okay, you can do five minutes. And um, I did a whole routine about the voice of the London Underground and uh, the woman uh, who reads out the things and and uh, in a slightly overly sexual way, yeah. uh, and that was uh, that was my that was my first ever stand up thing. I don't really remember how it went. I didn't. It, it wasn't really. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't good either. It was just people were like, okay, yeah, that might be funny, but was I didn't. I didn't have any personality on that stage. That was the response, like, yeah, okay. I think so. That, That's might, the, that, that might be funny. That was the impression <laughs> that I got. It was like, oh, I didn't do something there, but I've got, yeah. I had no personality on stage because right. I, I had my real personality. And as soon as I stood up, it just all disappeared away. And I just became a very monotone person being like, oh, isn't it funny? Mm. Don't you think how the woman on the underground sounds very sexual? And uh, it was very boring, I think. Did you probably. do the voice of the woman? I think I tried to, yeah. This is Shepherd's Bush. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was specifically around a station in London that's bank. And uh, she has a particular way of saying it, and it's, she'll be like, the next stop is bank. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. Change here for the Northern District, Circle, Waterloo and City Lines, and the DLR. Mm. And it was my whole thing, because it, it was, she says the DLR, that was when it's sex. She was like, and the DLR. And I was like, does she say that with every three-letter acronym at home? With a, uh, darling, can you make me a BLT? Oh. And then we're going to watch a, a DVD. DVD. I work for TFL. My husband <laughs> works for RBS. And, and tonight <laughs> we'll be watching the BBC. <laughs> oh. So it was, that was basically the routine. Mm. Um, and then when I came over here, I started doing the routine over here. And then Seb Marks did exactly the same thing, <laughs> but for the Metro in Paris. I was like, oh, well, I guess. You two keep ending up writing the same routines. <laughs> yeah, we've got very similar got minds. Very similar stuff going on yeah. there. So yeah. that was my first uh, experience on stage. Okay. All right. And then, um, Have you ever like really, really died on stage horribly? <laughs> oh, yeah. Loads of times. I mean, not, not just at the Edinburgh Festival where there was difficult. I don't know if you died on your ass oh, there. Oh, every yeah? day. It was... Really? It was, it was it was when was the death. first time you really died on your ass? Uh, the first time I don't, I can't remember the first time. Um, well, those o first open mics that I did in London, I did about ten of them before I moved to Paris, mm -hmm. and none of them really went well. Um, <laughs> I, re <laughs> I tried going. That it was it was uh, St Patrick's Day, which it almost is now, isn't it? Tomorrow, isn't it? Seventeenth, seventeenth, seventeenth. A few days. I uh, it was St Patrick's Day. 2009. What St. Patrick's Day? Basically, what does that mean? Oh, the it's the Irish national holiday where they all get shit faced more than they normally do, um, yeah. and uh, <laughs> shit faced, uh, drunk. So I think I must. Have, uh, I've I've got to try and find a photo of this. So um, so I went. I, I did this comedy night, and um, for this comedy night, I was like, okay, it's St. Patrick's Day. I do a pretty good Irish accent. <laughs> So I went on stage <laughs> trying to pretend that I was Irish and then halfway through decided to try and switch the accent back to my normal English. It was it was a complete disaster because I was so nervous. My my Irish accent just wasn't very good. You know, because normally I'd be like, hey, my name's Paul. I'm from Belfast. Nice to meet you. Uh, whatever the, the thing was. Yeah. I, and it was just... And I wore this T-shirt... Um, because I bought this T-shirt in Canada uh, when it was uh, when it was um, St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. And if if you're watching the video, uh, you'll see it here. It's a green uh, a green T-shirt that says Canadians, uh, Canadiens, because uh, that's the hockey team over there with a with a St. Patrick's cloverleaf. And that's you. W oh my God! Look at you. Yeah, that's that's what I used to look like. Look at this, everyone, on the video. It's <laughs> not Paul's bum, but it's almost as good. <laughs> that's Paul eleven years ago. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness! Yeah, so fresh faced. Yeah, nine years ago. Nine years ago. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that was my first, my 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 first uh, death on stage. Okay. I think. What and the Irish people were like? Well, there weren't any Irish people. What are people. you doing, you bastard? You're English. You're in get off the stage. 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was just very awkward. You know, it's, it was that time where you experiment on stage a lot more than you do now. Like I, I you know, although my, the most recent time I died on my ass was in a, a room that holds 2,800 people uh, in really? France. It's called the Grand Rex. And uh, it's one of the biggest rooms in, in France. You you um, you told us about that because last time you were on this podcast when we did the murder mystery detective did story. I te- did I tell you about that? That was the day that you were going to go and do that show. Oh, was it? You were going to <laughs> the show after the podcast. <laughs> and it was like, Paul's doing a show in front of 2,800 people. Wow, brilliant. Yeah, I, so I you died. I died on my ass. Really? Yeah. It, well, first of all, the ro- the many for many reasons. One, uh, the room was very big. I w- I'd never performed in a room that big. Two... Um, it holds 2,800 people, but there were only 1,000 people there. So basically, it was one-third full. And even we did a show at the Pan Am together, and we were doing our show together, which holds 60. If there was 20 people in there, it's a rough night. Yeah. But you just multiply that by 1,000. Yeah. Uh, to get, or whatever. But so, it was, it, so the room was a third full. So already, if people were laughing, it wasn't going to be loud. Then I didn't get introduced properly. I was opening for another guy. He didn't introduce me. No one introduced me. So basically the lights were on in the room and then all of a sudden my entrance music comes on and I, I come out, I'm like, shit, okay. Well, it, like two minutes before, I'm like, am I going to get announced? He's like, oh, sorry, no, it's not. I'm like, oh, great. I didn't have enough time to prepare my own introduction or whatever. So I just went out cold, basically, uh, without the audience, no claps. So the audience were all like, blah, 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 having a chat, blah, blah, blah. What are you going to do this evening? Oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. What, what should we eat later? Blah. And then suddenly, who's this? Yeah. And it's you. Good evening. And I just, I did. I and did. everyone's just like, who are you? Yeah, exactly. And um, I wasn't experienced enough to get out and, and try and warm the crowd up and talk to people. And I don't know. I don't know how you warm up a room that big. Uh, and so mm. I, for tw- I was doing a 20 minute set. And for the t- first 12 minutes, I, I died on my ass. And uh, I can't remember at what stage it was where people started laughing, but the next eight minutes were okay. They weren't amazing. Um, so that, w- and that was a very, that was one of those moments where I just thought, why am I doing this? I should quit and go back to my normal job. Like it's, a, it's very, oh, demor- yeah, yeah. It's, it's really demoralizing. When you, when you die in your ass in front of 15 people, it's okay in like a little bar down the road because it's only 15 people. What's the worst that's going to happen? But when it's, that many people, it it can it can be really because uh, you know thousand eight hundred people, that um, that was uh, or a thousand people. That's basically ten of my shows. So that's like taking the t- ten of my shows of the audience size and 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 it's as if ten of my shows didn't go well yeah. in a row. And so oh. it was it was. <laughs> It was, well, it was horrific. If you ever have like a bad experience like that, I've got a friend called uh, Alex, not Alex Van Walsen, but another friend from London called Alex Love. Yeah. And when he has a bad show, when he dies on stage, he has a routine where he goes home. He and eats, cries. <laughs> he eats biscuits and he listens to Queen. Okay. You know, like Freddie Mercury. Yeah, yeah. Primer. He, lis- he listens to Queen and eats biscuits <laughs> on headphones and just sort of like curls them in a ball. Curls up like that on his sofa, eating biscuits and listening to Queen, and just sort of like nurses himself back into uh, normality again. Do you have like a way of dealing with it when it g- doesn't go well? <sighs> no, I, d- I I don't have a specific way. I just I just stop talking to people, and then everyone comes up to me and like, "Oh, it wasn't that bad? No, it was good." You d- uh, shut up. I don't need you to tell me that it was better than it was because I didn't enjoy it and yeah, it wasn't yeah, good. Yeah. I just need to be left alone, uh, and so um, so yeah, I just I kind of. I think the best way is just to get back up on stage and for it to go well again. Definitely. And then next time it goes well, you're like, okay, you forget. You basically, you only remember the last time you performed. And uh, so if the last time was good, you, you, you feel good. If the last time you performed was terrible, then you will always remember that until you have another good set again. Mm, yeah, absolutely, yeah. In my, in my personal experience, that's okay. how I feel. Okay. I've just got one more question on the website here. And this is from Jack. Um, hello, Jack. Who, hello, Jack. All right. And Jack has written, hello, Paul. Hello, Amber. Amber's not here, uh, as we've already said. Um, uh, did you notice that she's not here? Of course you did. Uh, my, my question is, says Jack, uh, when and where did you first meet King? Now, <laughs> <laughs> at the burger joint. The, the Burger King. Yeah. Not the Burger King. Jack, when Jack writes on the website quite a lot, and he always calls me King. Oh, do <laughs> so you're called King Luke. No, just king. Just king. You're just king. It's quite cool, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, if I met Jack, I'm sure he'd be like, all right, king, how's maybe, it going? Maybe, maybe it's you. Maybe you've commented yourself. Right. Calling myself king yeah. on my own website. 
<laughs> How pathetic would that be? Logging in with uh, the details and then calling myself What's King. What's your email address? King at king.com. But like Jack, right? I don't know where he's from, yeah? And I don't know how he speaks, right? But... When I read Jack's comments, yeah. Do you read it in like a proper Sometimes, London accent? Sometimes, right? I, I read it out in this kind of voice. <laughs> read it out. <laughs> <laughs> I read it out in this kind of voice, yeah. So Jack's like, uh, Jack says, my question is, when and where did you first meet King? King. And King, please film this episode if possible. Thanks. thanks. <laughs> with an F. He's actually written thanks with an F. So you're right to do it in that accent. King, please film this episode. Yeah, blad. What are you talking about, blood? And then he's like, King, when will this episode be available on the website? I'm badly waiting for one. <laughs> and I've written, this one will go up in a week or two. This is like this, my serious yeah, yeah. teacher's voice. <laughs> I'm going to upload a couple of episodes before that, so hold tight. Yeah. Unfortunately, Amber can't be with us today, so it's going to be a Paul Taylor special episode. So, um, do you remember when we first uh, met I each other? I was trying to think. I don't know. Um, it would have. I think it was a comedy night. Yeah, either the New York comedy night or the French fried comedy night. I think it was it was early on. Uh, 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 um, at New York comedy night, I tell you what, I bet you we can find it. I bet you yeah, I can really? find if you're on my first. Uh, if I can type in New York comedy night, new the New York concrete jungle we, we where dreams are made of. We definitely met each other at a comedy show. Yeah, it would uh, have been a comedy show. Either at the So Gymnas or at the Pan Am Comedy Club. And I think we met each other in around 2013. I yeah, heard it, January 2013 was the first uh, time I ever got on stage in France. I actually heard about you before I met you. Oh, really? I remember hearing people talking about you. It's like, yeah... They're like, yeah, there's this other English guy on the scene, but to oh, be honest, really? he's a bit of a wanker, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All of them said very yeah. mean, nasty things about you. October Amber was like, oh, yeah, th there's Paul, but ugh, you don't want to meet Paul. No, of course they didn't say anything like that. People were like, oh, have you met Paul? He's English too. You know, people made a point of... People made a point of like mentioning that you were around because you, right. you were English as well. Okay. It's like, oh, look, you're English. Have you met Paul? He's, he's English, English as well. You know, like uh, people do that, don't they? They're just because yeah, you're from the same country that, oh, you could be your friends because you're from the same country. Yeah. Um, you can't find it. I'm can going to scroll through. I'm just going to scroll through until we get to 2013. But I think uh, I don't know if you're on the first night. I'm trying to think who performed the first night that I did it. It was the third of. It was the fourth of January 2013. Was the first time. But if that would have been, if I hadn't met, if you'd have heard me, for, no one would have heard of me before then. Like I never performed. I don't think I met you then. I think I met you at some point. To be honest, this doesn't really. It's this is not that interesting. Watching you, sc watching well, you not, do this. But it's no one's watching really us anyway. Or listening to your thumb. Well, it's fine. No one's listening to my Can thumb. Just keep doing that. I'm going to put my uh, microphone in f uh, to your yeah, phone yeah, on, to hear on. the sound of your thumb swiping up and down. I don't down. think you'll be able to hear anything. I'm doing that on purpose now, so you can hear. Right. The, Fascinating uh, stuff there. Watch, yeah, listening great. to you scrolling through your yeah, phone. I'm still in 2016, so it's not going to happen. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it was uh, it was during a comedy night. And uh, that's, uh, 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 I'm trying to think. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was basically 2013. It. Comedy show. Between January and June 2013 is when we met. And I think we just sort of hit it off because we're both, we're both from England, you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? And, um, hell. and so, you know, we hit it off because of that. And then I had you on the podcast at some point. Yeah, so that was in December of that year. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and then that's when I started doing uh, started doing my Taylor's top tips in January, thanks to the podcast that we did. Yeah, basically, I, you owe all of Everything your success to, you. to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Because you came onto the podcast and... I got famous with your listeners. Yeah. And then you... Um, we I, talked because about... Because of the podcast, I did Taylor's top tips and then that died on its ass and that no one watched that. Uh, <laughs> so it's actually nothing to do with <laughs> for me, about a it? year, and then uh, and then I stopped that after a year, and then um, and then all the while I was we were still on stage, and then at some stage uh, we did a show together. We yeah. did a half an hour together. Yeah, and then we'd made that for about uh, six months or a, or it was about or a year, a year almost. It? Yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah, almost. It was almost a year. It was about a year's worth yeah, of we sorry. Really, we didn't really change much, did we? In that year, it was just kind of like, yeah, okay, we'll just keep performing. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think I learnt my material. That's what I did. Yeah, you learnt. I can now remember it. <laughs> Couldn't remember yeah. it for six months. So I was being, going yeah. up on stage, going right. Good evening, everyone. Um, and then having to like come up with yeah. it from from scratch. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the show tonight. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be good fun. Are you going to do any new stuff? Uh, I don't think I'll do new stuff. No. Not really. No. Um, I don't. 
I've got lots of new stuff hanging around, but none of it's been properly tested. Yeah. I, I want to just, I'm just going to try and do a, a good set. Yeah, we set. should have a good audience as well. It's, uh, it's uh, yeah, 100 people, 100 seater, but it probably maybe 70, if 70, 80, which is, good. which is good. I'm trying to decide, basically. I've got kind of two sets in mind. The one set is where I do, you know, basically the first, the, the best 10 minutes from Sorry We're English, yeah. which is all that stuff about, I'm English and I live in France. Oh, <laughs> Oh, my! I don't. My French isn't very good. Oh, well, uh, you, can, you can you you can hardly. How long have you been here now? Four and a half years. Four and a half. It, you can. It's difficult to get away with that now. To be yeah. like, yeah, I've been here for four and a half years, and I still don't understand uh, when people <laughs> say. Because uh, <laughs> at that point, the audience are like, "God, is he an idiot? What's wrong with him?" I I still get that nowadays. Like I th I get that impression when I'm talking about yeah when I f when I first moved here I uh, had trouble with this and I'm like that was five or seven years ago Paul yeah what but you know I just don't tell them how long I've been here I just yeah. say I'm from England a bit like you I'm from England but I live in France you should you should go out tonight and be like hi my name's Luke I'm English but I live here in France just as a joke to say just <laughs> to see what happens just to see if they yeah. if they yeah I mean no one who's coming might have seen what the fuck. I think they will have done. I think Paul. they probably will have done. Of course, they will have done. I, uh, That's if there why was they're 15 coming. people, then then yeah. But it, since it's 70 odd, uh, I think most of them will have found it. They're coming to the show because they've seen you, and it's the Paul Taylor Comedy Night, and it's got your face on it. Uh, and uh, that's why they're coming. Yeah. But also, they're going to hopefully. Well, I think they're also the, the the only worrying thing that I the only thing that bothers me is that maybe because my one my my own show is sold out like five weeks in advance I wonder whether they think it's an extra date that's been added and they're not expecting other people so they just typed in Paul Taylor stand up or Paul Taylor live and that's the first thing that comes up and they go oh that's his live show maybe so whenever know. anyone else any, whenever anyone else is on stage they'll be like this boo get off the stage we want Paul no I think it'll be yeah. alright I think so it'll be fun I, I'm either going to do that sorry we're English material that I've done so many times and that I'm a little bit I'm a little bit bored of bored with um or I'm going to do the stuff I like to do the most, really, which, which is, is talking about movies. Right. Talking about Taken and right. Star Wars. Yeah. I think that's what <laughs> I like doing the most. And the BBC stuff, which is You've got to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll see. All right. All right, then. Uh, cool. Really nice to talk to you. Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for having me over. And uh, so we're sorry that Amber couldn't be here, but uh, we'll, we'll get together. We'll make it happen yeah. at some stage. But uh, yeah, this, this video thing, I don't know if people... It's if this is no idea. This is cool, but if you're if you're watching or listening to this, then uh, then uh, enjoy the rest of whatever you're doing for the next couple of minutes after you uh, press pause and hang up the podcast. That's not even a thing. But hang maybe up the podcast. Maybe you've got to go to work now and you've got to deal with that horrible boss. Maybe you're still at work and now you've got to go have lunch with him. And maybe you've just finished your ironing and and now you're 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 on to uh, another wash. Uh, maybe you're cooking. Who knows? Whatever you're doing, then uh, then enjoy it. Exactly. Just keep going, keep cleaning, keep traveling, keep moving, folks. Keep and moving. Uh, we'll catch up with you again. Wasn't there uh, a song, Keep Moving? It was uh, Moving, isn't it? Uh, Supergrass. There's moving, th keep on moving. No, no, no. There's something, there's, a, there's a, a, a lot of songs that probably like keep moving, like Don't Stay Still, Keep Moving. Don't Stop Life. Moving, Everybody's Grooving. Yeah. S Club 7, Paul. Don't Stop Moving. Nah. Really? Yeah, you don't you stop moving. moving. Everybody's, Everybody's no. Mm -hmm. That's S Club Seven. It's not a good uh, song to no, refer there was to. A, there's a, I don't know, whatever. Just keep moving. Keep moving, folks. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Speak to you again soon. But for now, goodbye. Bye. 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 bye, 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 bye.